Have you ever wondered what would have happened if Zeke's euthanasia plan was a success? Or even better, what if Grisha didn't inherit the founding titan? Or even worse, what if Mike Ziakras actually survived? What would be the consequences? Well, I spent a really long time researching things to bring you an alternate reality in which Zeke did complete his euthanasia plan. But to understand the full story, first let's take a trip down memory lane. On August 1st, in the year 825, Zeke was born to Grisha Jaeger and Dina Fritz in Marley. At this point in time, his parents were planning to overthrow the Marley and government and hopefully restore the Eldians back in power. When the Marleyan government announced the warrior program, asking for Eldian children to serve as potential warriors, Grisha decided to enter Zeke into the program to play the role of a spy for his cause. Initially, Zeke spent most of the time with his grandparents, hearing their stories about the crimes of their ancestors. Over time, his parents became very distant, giving him little attention outside of school. However, he would one day meet a very good friend by the name of Tom Kasaver. Zeke happened to meet Tom when he was playing catch by himself. However, at home, things would not get much better. Zeke's parents would not care for him, further growing his resentment against the quest for Eldian freedom. One day, he heard Tom reveal that he once had a family with a Marleyan woman who had killed herself and their son after learning he was an Eldian. Listening to his mentor lament his own birth, Zeke vowed to him that he would take back the founding time from Baradis and keep it out of Marley's hands to ensure it cannot be used to hurt anyone again. This is where his plan originated. Just like the Greek origin of the word euthanasia, the purposeful murder of people to end suffering and pain. That was exactly his plan. If no Eldians remained alive, no more suffering would occur. Soon after, Zeke was told that the Founding Titan must be in possession of someone who would agree to the plan. Therefore, Tom ordered Zeke to find someone who was willing to go through with the plan. This meant he had no choice but to turn in his parents. However, Grisha, his father, would be spared for the sole mission of gaining the power of the Founder, passing it to his second son, and ultimately setting Eldians free. The half-brothers did not meet until the end of Season 3, with Eren unaware that the enemy Titan before him was in fact his older brother. While Zeke had always wanted to save Aaron from the brainwashing of their father, they had only met in secret before Aaron's attack on Marley. In fact, Aaron's plan to launch a strike on Marley was not only to buy time for Paradis Island, but also as a means to take Zeke away from enemy territory. Aaron appears to have agreed with Zeke's euthanasia plan, especially causing the sterilization of the Aeldian people so that, unable to reproduce, they will peacefully die out over the next century or so. This goes in hand with Aaron's plan to use the power of the Founder to unleash the millions of colossal Titans inside the walls as a great display of strength, killing everyone as the Eldians die out. As they agreed on the deal before the attack on Marley, little did they know that things would never be the same. Afterward, after the fight in Paradis evolved, Eren seemed to be losing the battle. Being very wounded, he was left defenseless against the attacks of the Jaw and Armored Titans. Amidst the battle, Zeke arrives and Eren tries to reach him, hoping to activate the powers of the Founder. Therefore, Eren leaves his Titan and begins running to Zeke on foot. However, before he can reach his half-brother, Eren would be decapitated by a shot from Gabby's gun. Out of pure luck, Zeke catches his head and the two transform into the Founding Titan. However, if you are wondering what would have happened if Gabby didn't shoot Aaron's head, you should check out the video in the top right corner. Moving on, it turned out Aaron was not even interested in the euthanasia plan and betrayed Zeke to start the rumbling. Afterward, to put it frankly, he would be beheaded by Levi as a punishment for his actions. Yeah, from this perspective, it was a pretty disappointing life for Zeke, not accomplishing his goal. However, that's when I come in. To find out what would have happened if Zeke had actually completed his mission. To make a long story short, the Eldian race would slowly die out, unable to reproduce. However, the long story is way more interesting. Now let's assume the rumbling wouldn't have happened, and that only the euthanasia plan would have taken place. It would have gone something like this. Aaron gets shot by Gabby, and his head flies off into Zeke's hand, just like before. However, when turning into the Founding Titan, instead of destroying the walls, he would summon all the subjects of Amir and convene with them in the paths. Since Aaron is unable to use the Founder's power because he lacks royal blood. Zeke's involvement in the process is essential, thus putting the plan into action. By coming into contact with Eren, Zeke would ask him to modify the physiological makeup of the subjects of Amir. Eren betrays Zeke, telling him he could never go along with such a messed up plan. Preparing for this, Zeke commands Amir to detain Eren, as in the original timeline, and because Zeke never held the malicious intent of his ancestors, he nullifies the vow renouncing war and commands Amir to make all Eldians sterile. Eren sees that there's no way he can win and yields to Zeke's plan. Soon after Eren comes to this realization, he immediately talks to all subjects of Amir, just like he did before. In the past, he encounters the consciousness of all Eldians, past, present, and future. The Founding Titan's powers allows Eren to access their memories, more specifically their fears, creating a powerful connection. He can also sense the suffering that his people have endured for generations. With the new control over Eldians, Eren tells them about his true agenda. He speaks of the euthanasia plan and his desire to free 
his people from the curse of Amir once and for all. However, this wouldn't be so simple. On one side, some would say that destroying an entire race just for the crimes of their ancestors is completely blown out of proportion. After all, it's not their fault King Fritz was an oppressive maniac. They would go on to say that another quest for freedom is more reasonable and would yield better results. However, some who had to face harsher realities in their lifetime would accept Zeke's plan. They believed enough was enough and that the suffering should go away once and for all. As Aaron gives them the breakdown, they slowly begin to embrace the idea of euthanasia. They see it as a plan to finally end the cycle of hatred and suffering. As Zeke watches on, the Eldians all agree to end their lineage. As stated previously, this would occur with Zeke and Aaron both using their powers to modify the anatomical and physiological makeup of Eldians. They would unleash this throughout all of the race, meaning that reproducing would no longer be possible. People could still get busy, if you know what I mean, but there would be nothing more to it. Afterwards, it would be safe to assume that Zeke would want to erase their memories, so they would live the rest of their lives in peace until death. A couple years later, we would see the passing of the Titan Shifters due to the curse of Ymir. This would mean that Eren and Zeke would likely die off, alongside others like Falco and Armin. Their powers would be inherited by other Eldians, but because of their limited memory of their past, they would be completely powerless in any situation. The nation of Marley, as well as the rest of the world, would no longer see them as a threat and would thank them for their self-induced deaths. Keep in mind that everyone who lived on the island would slowly die off, so after a hundred years, only a few would remain. As they too passed away, Zeke would have been a success, no more suffering. But this is all assuming that Eren does not actually begin the rubbling, because if he did, it would be a completely different story. As we examine in the what if Eren completed the rumbling video, which you can check out after this, we could see that Eren completing the rumbling would have brought huge consequences. For example, the environment would be absolutely devastated, with resources like food and water not being found. And that's not even mentioning that the entire population would die. But where am I headed with this? Well, if Aaron agreed to complete Zeke's plan whilst also doing his own, it would ruin Zeke's vision either way. Let me explain. So let us just say that Aaron completes the rumbling with the euthanasia plan in mind, meaning he would spare all Eldian lives but kill everyone else. The Titans would roam across the face of the planet killing off every human. When this is completed, only Paradis Island would remain intact. So when Aaron and Zeke return, they initiate the plan. However, this would have the opposite effect as many problems would cause wars and battles between the people. More specifically, the Jaegerus would defend Eren, whilst the others would not. This would cause a huge civil war, in which amidst the chaos, the once thriving civilization that had existed within the walls would fail, leaving only devastation. This, paired with environmental issues, would be fatal for the people. Even with this sterilization effect, it would not be of use as most people would kill each other before they reached the natural point of death. Everything would become a wasteland, all life gone, only Eren and Zeke would remain amidst the world, seeing their actions and witnessing their entire race end in suffering. The one goal of Zeke, which was to end the tribulation of the Eldians, would be the exact way they met their doom, as they all died four years later by the curse of Ymir. That was the end of life as they knew it. Phew. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, you may be wondering what would have happened if Grisha never got his hands on the Founding Titan. Well, there are a lot of moving parts to this, but I'll only explore a few. Firstly, if Grisha was never able to get his hands on the Founding Titan, then that must mean the Attack Titan is just plain stupid. You see, the only reason that Grisha was allowed to live was because of Eren Kruger, an Eldian spy posing as a Marleyan officer who had the power of the Attack Titan, was able to see into a future where Grisha successfully retrieved the power of the Founder. With that said, if he never got the power, this would mean that Frida Reese from the royal family would still have it in her possession. When word gets out that a titan tried to take back a wall, Frida would want Eren's immediate execution since she is bound by her vow renouncing war and believes that Eldian should accept any suffering that comes their way. When Zeke and Pig come into the picture to retrieve the power of the founder, Frida would submit herself willfully because the process would face severe oppression from Eren and the Survey Corps. With the armored, beast, colossal, and cart titans in the possession of Marley, it would be a no-brainer as to who takes home the W. If Eren proves to be too stubborn, Zeke can eat Frida and then command every Titan on the island to attack both Eren and the Survey Corps, completely annihilating them. But hold on, what if Mike Zakaria survived, considered humanity's second strongest soldier after Levi? What exactly would happen if he was still alive? Well, if he managed to avoid the flying horse that was headed his way and fled from the Beast Titan, Mike's story could have turned out a lot differently. He would have greatly aided the efforts of the Survey Corps at the Battle of Shiganshina District, while Erwin and others planned their best 
best course of action, Levi and Mike both execute their plan to take down the Beast Titan, and since it's the two of them there, there would be no means of escape while Levi is done removing Zeke from the nape. Spotting the ugly cart titan from afar, Mike would go on to distract it while Levi eliminates Zeke right then and there. This event would greatly dismantle the Marleyan forces, leaving Reiner, Baradolt, and Pick without their commander. With a loss of morale, the Marleyan soldiers would surrender and Paradis Island would not have gained one or two, but four new titans to their arsenal. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this one where we explore what would happen if Eren ate all nine titans.